Gentleman is a new film written and directed by Guy Ritchie. It stars Matthew McConaughey as a man named Mickey Pearsons who is from America who moved to Britain to sell weed. He runs a huge weed dealing empire, but now he thinks he's at a point in his life where he can sell off his company and just sit back and collect the money and just live out his life peacefully with his wife, played by Michelle Dockery. But while this is going on, they intertwine with a rival gang led by a man named Dry Eye, played by Henry Golding, so they start to have some skirmishes there. Meanwhile, a private detective, played by Hugh Grant, named Fletcher, is digging up dirt on certain things that are going on with their business, and Ray, played by Charlie Hunnam, who is Mickey Pearson's second-in-command, has to deal with that as well. My history with Guy Ritchie has always been a little weird. The Sherlock Holmes movies, I remember thinking that the first movie was just kind of whatever, but A Game of Shadows was really great, and it's my favorite Guy Ritchie movie. Keep in mind, I haven't seen those in quite some time. The Man from U.N.C.L.E. I found to be a decent, enjoyable ride of a movie that I haven't seen since I've seen in theaters, but I, 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 I have pleasant memories of it, so I like to think that it's still good and still decent in my mind. When I was really young, I started to watch Snatch, but I made my parents cut it off because I couldn't get into it and I didn't really care for it. I rewatched it in full last week, and I did like it. It definitely got better this time around. Although I don't think it's a perfect movie, and I think it does kind of suffer from a Guy Ritchie over-reliance on style in certain parts and certain things that he thought was really funny that I just didn't really find all that funny while watching the movie. But it was definitely good, and Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which he made before, I found decent, and it definitely, it's not my favorite Guy Ritchie movies out of the ones that I've liked, but it definitely showed signs of improvement for him as director, which is expected since that was his first film. I still haven't seen some of his other movies like Rock and Rolla or Swept Away, which I hear is like one of the worst movies ever, at least that's kind of what I've gotten the gist of, that a lot of people really hate that movie. But as far as the Guy Ritchie movies I don't like, I, I really didn't like Aladdin, which he did make, although it doesn't feel like a Guy Ritchie movie. I was surprised that he took that job, uh, but the worst one that I have seen from him so far is definitely King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, without a doubt. That was all things that you would expect in a Guy Ritchie movie, but done horribly wrong and definitely shouldn't have been matched up with King Arthur and I didn't like how they were trying to set up like a whole cinematic universe out of that, that there were some reports coming out. It, it was just a re really bad movie that I did not enjoy at all. So when the promos for The Gentleman started to come out, I was just kind of like whatever towards it. It was a January release, so bad sign right off the bat. But I was just, you know, Guy Ritchie's not like one of my favorite directors of all time. He's made some movies that I've enjoyed, some more than others, kind of varying in quality. But because of those past two movies that I had seen from him, Aladdin and King Arthur, I was just like, Whatever, man. I, I, I just don't know about this. But walking out of The Gentleman, I was actually really surprised because this might be my favorite Guy Ritchie movie aside from A Game of Shadows, which I need to reiterate, I haven't seen that in a long time. I just remember really loving that. But this movie, I really did enjoy and I was quite surprised by because it does feel like a Guy Ritchie movie in the sense that it has like the same kind of energy. It's got some really witty, well-written lines of dialogue thrown in. But the style of this movie is really toned down. Like there's no random moment like in the opening of Snatch where the guys bust in and then like the camera does a lot of weird movements like it goes upside down it freezes a lot it's like there's nothing really like that in this film that's so distracting like everything feels like it's naturally kind of placed and it was editing choices that I thought were really cool to see and it was a really neat style for Guy Ritchie to go with there's no random moments of style I guess is the best way to describe it like that that would be a thing that you would pick out in certain Guy Ritchie movies that randomly it, feel, it feels like they'd kind of shoehorn in an editing choice that maybe could work or maybe wouldn't. This one I thought it was always working and I couldn't have been more surprised by that. I also really like the way he told his story in this movie because it's one of those things that could be told very straightforward but because of the choice he made on how he wanted to tell this story it actually makes the impact a lot better and it gets you more invested in the story as a whole. And I don't really want to tell you exactly how this story is told because I think it would ruin it for some people. I kind of went in not knowing how it was going to be done. I thought it was going to be like fairly straightforward. So I was surprised when the movie's storytelling kind of was laid out the way it was. And I was like, this is actually really inspired, like it's an inspired choice, uh, and I, I really do admire that about him in this movie. There are a couple jokes that I wouldn't say were like obnoxious or anything, but just it didn't really hit the way certain other lines of dialogue were hitting. But that being said, I found this movie very entertaining and very funny throughout the entire film. One of the things that helps is that you have a great cast of actors here who know how to work with this material. My highlight, I think, is definitely Hugh Grant, uh, who is just, he's so wonderful in this movie. He's playing it so vibrantly and just so 
charismatically, but he's kind of, he's a little bit of a sleazeball when you get down to it, like what his character is all about, but you're digging him so much because of the performance and because he's got a great storytelling kind of persona written up for him to perform. And you could tell Hugh Grant was just really enjoying eating up every single scene that he was in. He was a blast to see in this movie. Someone else who I thought did a really great job was Matthew McConaughey, who really did live up to his character and you totally bought him as this guy, but also his wife played by Michelle Dockery, she did a really great job. There are certain scenes that they give her that I wasn't really expecting her to work with, but they did, and I thought she worked really well with them. Henry Golding, who I've really liked lately in movies like A Simple Favor and Crazy Rich Asians, they give him a really great role here as this character that is just freaking nuts, and is just really allowed to have a lot of fun playing this character that is pretty conniving and pretty villainous. It was just a really fun character, and it created a very memorable villain. It wasn't one that was just kind of like a lame villain or an unintimidating villain. Henry Golding really brought a lot to this character and I was really impressed to see that. Colin Farrell who plays this coach who takes in like kids off of the street who are going down a bad path and tries to set them on a good path. Like he was really funny too. I really like Colin Farrell as an actor and he got a really great role to play with as well but Charlie Hunnam was also really impressive in this movie because a lot of people like to pick on Charlie Hunnam. I'm not one of those people. I like Pacific Rim and I've heard great things about Sons of Anarchy but this might be like my favorite performance that I've seen from him so far because he's just really embracing the tone of this character, the tone of the movie he's in. There's a moment where Charlie Hunnam has to absolutely command the room that he is in. He has to be the largest intimidating figure in it, and I totally bought it. And I wouldn't say he was, like, scary in the scene, but it was something where you're kind of sitting back like, okay, like, he he's going really hard in this scene, but for all the right reasons. Like, it's exactly what the character demanded of him to do, and he really delivered it all very well with a lot of menace. And everyone in this cast is having a blast, and you can definitely stay the same about Charlie Hunnam. There's, like, one, like, small thing that he did. There's like one small like little noise that he made that I wasn't expecting him to make and I, I didn't expect that to be like a big like laugh moment for me but I laughed at it and I was enjoying it so much. And it's like a small little action that I've just for some reason it's been stuck in my brain as something that was really memorable. So props to them for coming up with some dialogue and some character acting moments that are going to be able to stay with you for a little bit of time because it's not really a movie that I have forgotten so quickly you know. It, it's something that has stuck with me ever since I saw it a couple days ago. And a lot of it is obviously due to the great storytelling that Guy Ritchie had on display here. It's a simple story that is made much better because of the creative decisions that he's made and because of the actors he has to deliver all of these lines and to place in these scenes as these characters. I do have a couple other issues with this movie besides some jokes not really landing. There's a reveal near the end of the film that just kind of felt like they needed something else to get a character from here to there. And I was just kind of like, eh, it's a little clunky. It, it definitely feels like shoehorned in is just an extra thing to do. So it's it's not entirely smooth. And I do think they could have spent a little bit more time near the beginning of the film to kind of set up certain things, certain characters a little bit better. But even then, you get the gist um, as the movie goes on. It just, I think, uh, setting up a little bit more of a beginning on how certain characters met maybe could have fleshed it out a bit more. But that being said, I had a really surprisingly good time with this movie. I enjoyed the heck out of it a lot more than I expected for a Guy Ritchie movie that was coming out in January that I didn't really have any anticipation for. The acting is all wonderful here. Every character I really enjoyed and I didn't get bored seeing them or, or, or I was like, I don't really want to see this character. I just was enjoying the ride that Guy Ritchie had placed us on. It's a well-written movie, a well-directed movie. Its cinematography is good. It's got a really good score as well to accompany a good soundtrack and also the editing isn't distracting, which is perfect. Guy Ritchie, I think, has found a way to hone in what he thinks is a really great creative style, but not have it be so overbearing, which is all I could really ask for at this point. I'm going to give The Gentleman a B plus. If you don't know certain things about the plot already, I'd say keep it at that. I'd say also if you want a really great experience, even more so, try not to see any trailers beforehand if you haven't yet, because I think it is a really rewarding experience if you don't know certain ways the plot reveals itself as it goes on. But if you've seen The Gentleman, leave in the comments below what you thought of it, and as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.